Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us at the 2013 Courage Canada National Blind Hockey Tournament presented by AMI. I'm Matt Morrow, the National Program Director of Courage Canada Hockey for the Blind. And with me, I have a co-host, the President, Founder, and Spokesperson of Courage Canada Hockey for the Blind, Mark Demonis. Good afternoon, Mark. Hey, thanks for having me on, Matt. This is great. Getting ready for the gold medal game here. This is the gold medal match. We have in the yellow jerseys, our yellow team, fittingly, the Canucks playing against the blue jerseys, the Leafs. So for people wondering at home, the players come from all across Canada and are divided into four teams to play in a preliminary round robin followed by two medal games, first versus second for the gold, which is happening right now, and second versus third for the bronze, which just happened a few minutes ago. So there are three members of the EBU, Montreal Blind Hockey Team, on each team. And there are four members of Toronto, and there's two members of Vancouver and a couple others, and we're away. Francois Beauregard, Montreal Ibu, getting the puck. Passing it forward, stolen by Steve Galarno. Steve Galarno is one of the tournament scoring leaders, number 23 yellow, streaking in from the Canucks. He makes a pass, number 18, number 16, sorry. Number 16 with the puck. He loses it, that's Ryan Van Preet. Oh, Steve Galarno races in on the back check. Nice pass made across by the Leafs. Francois Beauregard with the puck. Doesn't get the shot off. Gets poke checked off his stick by number 14 of the Canucks. So, Mark, what are your thoughts on this weekend so far? Oh, it's really great to see all the players coming out, participating. And uh, it's interesting. A lot of players have really stepped up their play since last year in Quebec City, the exhibition series. And it's great to see uh, a lot of friendly faces out today and uh, looking forward to uh, see how this gold medal game goes. Yeah, and I think it's going to be quite the gold medal game. And Steve Galarno... Throws a pass into the corner for number 14, Gary St. Denis. Oh, the puck is in the net. We have our first goal of the game. It was Steve Galarno from Gary St. Denis, and it is 1-0 for the Canucks. Now, the Leafs aren't used to taking a goal right away like that. They've been playing pretty solid around Robin series, and uh, this is going to be a big shocker for the Leafs. Let's see how they manage the battle back here. I'm not sure if the Leafs have had a deficit all tournament. In fact, the Leafs are our first-place finisher of the round robin, having won all three of their matches perfect three and zero but they were all close matches winning two by one goal and one by two goals including an empty netter but the Leafs uh, no. No, they cannot. sorry about that we're having technical difficulties in the booth the Canucks have scored the first goal of the game there's Karen Russo of the Toronto Ice House one of our two female participants circling the puck in the corner number 11 Graham Foxcroft for the Vancouver Eclipse. All the way from Maple Ridge, British Columbia, Graham Foxcroft played a heck of a tournament. A lot of points he's put up for the Leafs. And Scott Roberts from the Eclipse gains the blue line, tries the drop pass, does not work. Shut down, blocked out of the zone. There's tournament leading scorer Bruno Hache, number 21, a member of the Canadian Paralympic goalball team out there showing why he's a high-level athlete, absolutely dominating the competition. And we have... An offside, a delayed offside. Mark, what, uh, is this the first time you've played with Bruno? Yeah, Bruno Hache. He's definitely put up a lot of points this tournament. and uh, Been able to catch in on a few games when I haven't been playing on the uh, on the Red Habs team. And uh, Bruno's definitely been performing out there. And it's great to see him and a lot of members of the Lacey Bouda Montreal who have come all the way from Quebec who are participating. And they seem to be having a good time. And we have a face-off that was not done correctly. One of the players went too early and the bench door was open. So we're going to do a little bit of a reset here. Just checking some statistics. When these teams first met in the round robin last night, the score was 4-3 for the Leafs. So that's a really, really tight game, and we're hoping to see more of the same here. Francois Beauregard dumps it into the zone. Here's one of our rookie Ottawa players completing a pass. Number two is... Uh, number two is Kevin Rawlings, completing a pass to number seven, Rick Oriold. And out of the zone comes Steve Galarno breaking in. He's got Gary St. Denis with him. Gary St. Denis gets into the crease. He's got to be careful there. He's not blowing dead for a crease violation. Oh, and number seven of the Leafs has stolen the puck. That's Rick. Oh, we have our first penalty of the game. And it looks like it's going to be against the Leafs. We wow. will have a Canucks power play. What do you think of the power play here, Mark? Wow, that's interesting. I mean, the Leafs have not been in a situation like this throughout the whole round-robin series. 
They're down one goal, and now they got a penalty. I, I don't know if they're going to be able to bounce back here. It's going to take a lot of strength here. Yeah, we'll see about mental toughness here. The penalty was taken by number 10, Francis Manella. Two minutes for hooking. My apologies. The penalty was for interference. And Karen Russo has the buck in front of the net. Clears the zone. Streaking down the ice is number 11, Graham Foxcroft, but he's got nobody with him. One of the rules in blind hockey is that you must complete one pass after the red line before you're eligible to score. So there are no breakaways in blind hockey, and Graham just had to cycle the zone, and he actually turns it over, and Yellow's coming back the other way with the counterattack. Wayne St. Denis with the dump and chase. The brothers split up, not playing on the same line today. It's funny, the other day we were joking about the St. Denis comparing them to the Sedin brothers of the blind hockey world. The St. Denis are the Sedins of the blind hockey world. That seems like a good comparison. That was Brian Cowley of the Vancouver Eclipse that got upended in the corner there, number 24, but he got right back up, and he seems to be all right. And there's his Vancouver teammate, Scott Roberts, on the Leafs, dangling out. He's trying to dump it down the ice. Icing has been waved off. It's rolled all the way around behind the net. The yellow team's going to regroup and counterattack. Oh, and of course, the reason there was no icing is because we are still on the power play. There are 50 seconds left in the interference call to Francis Manila. Mark, how was your experience in this tournament? Did you end up in the penalty box at all? Yeah, I happened to get a few penalties, and uh, I think sometimes I forget that there's no body contact, Matt, in the in the blind hockey league. And uh, I know I had my time spent in the penalty box. I learned my lesson. I've been uh, some great refereeing this weekend. Brought to you by the Greater, Greater Toronto Hockey League. Well, and Mark, is this your first tournament since losing your sight? Last time you played in a hockey tournament, you probably would have uh, had body checking. Isn't that correct? Yeah, that is correct. I mean, when I grew up playing hockey, visually impaired, I definitely uh, threw a few hits before I lost my vision and started playing blind hockey. But uh, this is definitely a great gold medal game so far, and I uh, hope to see maybe we won't see too many more penalties. And that's uh, Brian Cowie of the Clips, number 24, streaking in, working in the corner. Against number 15, Mike Davies of Peterborough. Cycling around the net is Steve Galarno, but he gets poke checked. And this, the puck gets poked right out of the zone, and we're going to go for a line change here for the Leafs. Now that they're back to five on five, and we'll see how it goes. Francois Beauregard streaking in after Steve Galarno gets the stick out. Passes to Gary St. Denis, who gets tangled up there with Mike Davies. Buck comes around, and Francois clears the zone, and Scott Roberts is streaking off the bench with that great speed of his. Number nine coming down the boards. Tries a drop pass to Francois. Steve Galerno intercepts. Number 12 comes in, knocks it in front of the net. Right now it's a yellow puck. Blue recovers inside the zone. They still have not completed the mandatory pass, though. Megan McHugh gets it on her stick, clears it into the corner. Number 11. Number 11, Graham Foxcroft, behind the net. Number 11 makes a pass. Back to the point. Scott Roberts now playing the point. Number 9, cycling the puck. Cuts it down low <coughs> to Graham Foxcroft. Graham shoots it behind the net. We have an errant stick on the ice that we need to get rid of before a player trips on it. I hope one of the referees sees this soon in blind hockey. We definitely clear the debris the second we can find it. And it's cleared out of the zone. Big save. Big save there by Steve Vandermeer, one of the goalies from the Vancouver Eclipse. But he looks like he's a little lost in his zone, to be honest. Puck gets cycled into the corner. Steve Galerno with the puck, and he finally clears the zone, and one of the referees is going to pick up that air and stick. Wow, what action, Mark. It's definitely an upbeat game, really competitive. It's great to see the gold medal game. Both teams trying everything to get to the gold, and um, no one here wants silver, I think, Matt. Nobody here wants silver. That, uh, that's, that's probably a fair assessment here. I know there's, uh, there are players on both teams that will be thrilled over the moon either way, but there's certainly some really competitive guys that are going to be especially excited. Oh, and what do we have in here? Does the goalie have the puck? Yes, he does. Tufik Chibob from Montreal with the save. Big save, too. That was a rebound that was wide open. And We'll definitely be seeing Tufik for a long time here in the blind hockey as we grow and develop more and more. Younger player in the tournament, under 18, and uh, he's definitely uh, proven himself playing in the gold medal game today. Tuvik is the youngest player in the tournament, but one of the great things about the uh, the Courage Canada movement and working with the blind hockey teams is we're really on a youth movement right now. For a long time, we had very experienced players that are starting to creep up in age, 
But we have an excellent group of players in the 18 to 25 zone, and we're trying to recruit more and more players of any age in general to play all across the country. Mark, what does it mean to have this tournament at Maple Leaf Gardens, the former Maple Leaf Gardens, now Ryerson's Mattamy Athletic Center? Well, it's just a great venue. I mean, to be in this historical building, newly renovated, state-of-the-art, uh, Ryerson University has done a great job bringing this building back and keeping its heritage while still keeping it state-of-the-art. And It's funny seeing the Leafs playing here, gold medal game back at the Gardens, and uh, it'd, be, uh, it'd be nice to see the Leafs take it home because I don't think they're going to be taking home uh, a cup anytime soon in the city. So, Oh, we hope so. You just never know, right? I think that's probably a fair assessment of the Maple Leafs, <laughs> although it is a team on the upswing. Speaking of the Leafs, there's Scott Roberts behind the net, pushing the puck in. However, Yellow has got it, and they're going to counterattack here. They're offside. They're going to be offside here. Delayed offside, and he touches the puck. Yeah, Bit of a miscommunication. Yeah, sometimes it is difficult, eh, Matt, for some of the players to pick up the offside. And But, uh, you know, the more these players spend time playing with each other, the more they start figuring out and working with each other on the ice and, and uh, play more of a team-style play. Wayne Gretzky called it the most selfish play in hockey, but in blind hockey, it's downright accidental sometimes. <laughs> you committed many offsides this weekend, Mark? You know what? I went on one offside, and uh, I uh, unfortunately got called for it, and uh, I looked at the ref and smiled and said, hadn't, uh, hadn't been called for that in quite a while. And speaking of offside, this one isn't. Galerno comes in, passes to Gary St. Denis, who fires a shot off the post. Gary behind the net to Steve in front. Steve, oh, and that was an excellent block by Francis Manila. The Canucks now we've got a really crease violation. This. The Canucks really want this, hey, Matt? They are, uh, they're doing everything right now just to try and get up more on the board here. It's a really interesting matchup because the Leafs have a more balanced scoring approach with six players that have between three and four points in this tournament where the Canucks have two players that have combined for 15 points and then a couple other players with one or two points each. So we'll really see this combination of Steve Galarno and Bruno Hache, and uh, we'll see if they're able to dominate or if the Leafs can once again shut them down like they did last night. I also think we have a bit of line matching going on. The coaches have learned their players a little bit over the uh, course of the weekend. And uh, Robert, who is Gignac, is the referee and volunteer for the uh, Montreal Ibu. And he is coaching the Leafs team today. And uh, I know he knows Bruno Hache and Steve Galerno quite well, and he'll be instructing his troops on how to best shut them down because they are the focal point of the attack. And Galerno rips a shot off the side of the net into the corner, cycles it around, loses it in his skates. That was a good poke check by one of our Ottawa players, Kevin Rowlings. We're very excited to start an Ottawa program next season. We've got two players coming uh, to our tournament this year. And we have at least uh, five players who are excited to start playing a uh, weekly blind hockey game in Ottawa next year. So we most definitely uh, are calling for all hands on deck there with that project. And back in the corner, number five of the Leafs, Pascal saint saens gets the puck, passes it up. That looks like Kevin Rawlings coming across, tries the pass. Number seven comes in with a sweet dangle. That's Rick Oriol, and he scores. Oh. Rick Oriol with the sweet dangle to go around the defenseman, and he puts it top shelf on Steve Vandermeer. We have a 1-1 tie game. You know, the Leafs really needed that goal there. They needed to really get back into this game, I tell you, because if they didn't start getting even here before we get into the second period, we uh, you just never know what's going to happen for the next two-thirds of the game. And we got a face-off at center ice. We got Bruno Hache out there. That competitor is not going to like the fact that the Leafs scored on the last shift. Bruno Hache in the zone, drop pass, passes it to Brian Mackey. Brian Mackey had a wide open cage, but he hit the defender, Karen Russo. And that was Bruno Hache with a big shot, but Tufik Chibab had the answer. Stayed right in the crease and took it in the chest, held on for the whistle. We're going to have a face-off in the offensive zone for Team Yellow, the Canucks. And we have uh, some guest players dropping by our broadcast booth, which is uh, at the top of uh, which is at the top of the concourse at Mattamy. 
a lot of players from the bronze medal game, like myself, we just played and just standing around now getting a bite to eat, just checking out the gold medal game and uh, taking part in the festivities. And for those that are curious, the bronze medal game was our first uh, blowout of the tournament, finished with a score of 5 to nothing. Uh, and unfortunately for you, Mark, that was your team on the wrong end of that. It was the, uh, it was the Sens defeating the Habs by a score of 3 to 1. And for those watching... What just happened was a shot in the top corner hit that blocker that we have in the top foot of the net. Goals are only allowed to be scored in the bottom three feet of the net in blind hockey. And we have put a shooter tutor, canvas shooter tutor, to cover the top foot of the net. Uh, and when the puck hits that, there is a face off. Matt, special guest in the booth right now, NHL Network broadcaster and host of AMI Sports Access, Rob Simpson. Rob, how are you enjoying the festivities here this weekend? Fantastic, Demo. Get a scoring opportunity. Oh, maybe not. As is often the case on Sports Access, they like to give you, give you a little grief, give you the gears. So the, the cherry picking and blowing the zone, you know, that was pretty impressive in that first game. For sure. What do you think of the blind oh, hockey, Rob? I like you're always picking. You're always thinking offense there, Timo. <laughs> uh, the, uh, I think it's fantastic. It was, uh, Friday was the first time I've ever seen it, and um, it's tremendous, tremendously competitive. I like the fact that your game was getting chippy at the end. So these guys are taking it very, very seriously. But, hey, it's hockey. So it doesn't matter what your condition or status is, you're going to get a little fired up, right? Well, what do you think about the goalies stopping some of these pucks? I mean, it's just phenomenal seeing them with, like, no vision at all, just being able to do such a thing. Yep. I think it's crazy that to have pucks just blasting you um, when you can't see them because they are totally blind. And I was telling some of the folks that work with the Leafs, and uh, about about that scenario, getting blasted by shots when you don't expect it. I think it's pretty impressive. Absolutely. And uh, Rob, tell me, AMI Sports Access, AMI, the presenting sponsor of the organization, AMI Sports Access. Why don't you tell us a bit about the show and uh, what it's all about? Well, you're definitely the star, Demo. But <laughs> I like to think I'm the star, but they don't pay me as much as they pay you. Once a week for an hour, we talk about relevant sports. Uh, more than relevant, actually, impactful sports and people that have an influence on uh, visually impaired and disabled sports around Canada. What have we done, Demo? We've done curling, we've done hockey, we've done women's sports, we've done hockey fights, we've done a pond hockey show, we're doing this. Uh, we'll end up doing like diving, swimming, we've done football, we've done, what else have we done? We've done, oh, like, we've done a lot of blind sports. 14 of them. A lot of blind sports. Skiing. Snowboarding, that's coming up yeah. next. Let me shoot that down at Wayne Gretzky's restaurant in Toronto, 99 Blue Jays Way. Great food, great service. One great restaurant. Look at you. Looks like we're getting back into the game here, and uh, we're going to have uh, Matt Morrow jump back in the booth here and uh, get our game going back in the next period. Thanks, Demo. And thank you to Rob Simpson. Sports access is always a treat. Covering Courage Canada programs, and they're going to be doing an upcoming program on this tournament. It's fantastic coverage. I think the sport of blind hockey is really just starting to be discovered by a lot of people. Wouldn't you say so, Mark? Yeah, I mean, this just a tournament like this really puts people in the forefront of, of exposure, recognition, and these players deserve it. They've done everything they can to come here and compete. That's what it's all about. And we have a penalty. A penalty to start the second period. There's a massive pile up there. Oh, and it's a runaway freight train in the form of Wayne St. Dennis taking out two of the Leafs players. Two for one, and he's going to have to spend two minutes or left in the sin bin. Wayne St. Dennis grew up in Windsor, Ontario with his brother Gary St. Dennis, and uh, now a product of the Toronto Ice Owls, and I tell you, he's a heck of a hockey player and uh, really loves the game, very passionate, a key volunteer with our youth programs at Courage Canada. What a guy. And we also have a special guest in the booth whose sister is listening, who just played in the bronze medal game. With me, I have Mark Bentz. Bentz, what was your experience like this weekend? Wonderful experience. Unfortunately, the end didn't turn out the way I liked it, but boy, it was great to get out with the boys, play some hockey, and uh, be around visually impaired people and enjoy the sport. Right on. Well, thanks for joining us, Bentz. And uh, as he mentioned, that the bronze medal game did not go his way. However, the gold medal game is getting quite exciting for everybody in the building. There's Bruno Hache stealing the puck and clearing it down the ice, wasting some time on the clock. A minute 30 left in the power play for the Leafs. The Leafs dump it into the zone, but they can't get organized, and Yellow sends it right back out. Now Monsieur Francois Bonnegarde with the puck. He completes the pass, the mandatory pass. They are now eligible to score. Rick Oriol has the puck on his stick, comes into the zone, 
Oh, and it's a goal! You know, off that. a defender's stick, it popped about seven feet in the air over the goalie and landed into the back of the net. There was absolutely no chance for Steve Vandermeer on that one. You know, I have to say that really started with Francois Beauregard. He's one player who's really stepped up in this tournament, really playing really hard. And uh, you know what? It's uh, it's great to see him and uh, and the Leafs clicking right now at the Gardens. And we have a score of two to one on the power play. I'm sure Francois Beauregard and Rick Oyo right now are having a chuckle laughing at that play, eh, Matt? No, that's great. They're going to add to their uh, to their tournament totals. I think uh, some of the guys are going to be quite impressed with the amount of points they were able to put up. But there's an errant pass from the lease intercepted by Galerno. Galerno racing down the ice. Coming into this game, he was second overall in points in this tournament. Aside from his line mate that he's been setting up, Bruno Hache, who is leading the tournament with six goals and two assists. But the Leafs get organized, and Scott Roberts comes in, tries the drop pass, tries the drop pass, not offside. Gary with the uh, Graham with the puck. Now it's uh, Steve Galerno coming back into the zone. Graham Foxcroft chasing him down in the corner. Galerno cycles around the net. Galerno looking to make that pass. Makes the pass across. There's Ryan Van Preet going in. Oh, Ryan Van Preet was reaching for the puck, and he tripped the blue player. The blue player went hard into the boards, and we are having a tripping penalty. A little bit of commotion, it seems oh, like, by the bench. The referee has thrown the coach of the Leafs out of the game. Albert Gignac, who is coaching the Leafs, has been ejected from the gold medal game in a uh, turn of events. Uh, for unsportsmanlike conduct. Hey, you know, that's just, uh, this is all part of the game, and people have to realize that the sport is getting more and more serious, and uh, some things just can't be tolerated, and, uh, you know, referees had to make a final call on that, and uh, the call is what it is. That's it. I mean, I'm the tournament director, and I have final say, but I have authorized the referees and informed them that they are not to be taking any guff from the coaches at all. So... Um, if Robert has crossed the line there, he's a passionate guy. And in the heat of the moment, there's a two-minute penalty to the Leafs. It's a bench penalty. It's going to be served by uh, number 12, Scott Roberts, I believe. And some of the dogs barking here in the booth, I think they're not too happy about the uh, what's going on in the game as well. But uh, we're trying to bring a little humor to the situation right now while the, uh, the two the two refs and the teams figure out what's going on here. Yeah, and it is running time in our tournament. So, you know, I'd, I'd like to see them get sorted out and get started here because uh, they've wasted about two minutes off the clock with this incident. However, we are on a schedule, so we need to continue with uh, the game. They're getting ready to go. So as Mark, my co-host here, mentioned, we do have several guide dogs in the building, and you can hear them barking, uh, either barking in approval of the call or barking uh, in disapproval, depending on who their owner is. Buck is dumped down the ice by the Leafs. They managed to kill 20 seconds out of the penalty. Steve Galarno recycles with the puck, and Galarno's out there with Bruno Hache. This has been a deadly combination all weekend. Galarno tries the fancy toe drag, no dice. Rick Oriel blocks it. There's a whistle on the play. Rick Orio really doesn't want and to we have, this game. We have the clock stopped because uh, a coach that was ejected has returned. He needs to uh, leave the playing surface. He needs to leave the playing surface of the arena. And uh, he's trying to continue to coach. Um, and perhaps I may actually have to uh, vacate the booth briefly while uh, Mark continues yep. to uh, speak. Absolutely. Yeah, so Matt Morrow being the tournament coordinator and national program director, he's going to have to just deal with the situation right now at ice level and uh, and see where things are at with uh, with this call here. And Actually, the... you know what? For the moment, he has uh, the coach has left the building, so provided he doesn't return, I am, uh, I am free to remain. Great to have you back in the booth, Matt, because <laughs> I don't know how I was going to do the play-by-play -play with my I didn't go the far. We have visually impaired players, but we do not have visually impaired play-by-play -play announcers uh, at our tournament, although 
with uh, certain types of vision impairment, I'm sure it's uh, quite possible to do a very accurate play-by-play. -play. Speaking of which, we have Bruno Hache in the corner. And no, number 21 could not hold it at the line. Passes across to Steve Galarno. Galarno makes it, so the pass is good. He runs it. Oh, and he flubs the shot. He didn't get any good wood on it, and it went wide of the net. But Bruno picks up the puck and recovers. Bruno's at the point. Bruno's walking in. He's going to let it rip. And it's deflected. Deflected by number 11, Graham Foxcroft, and picked up by uh, Scott Roberts, who then fires it down the ice. At the other end, Ryan Van Preet picks up the puck, passes it across. Scott Roberts on the penalty kill here. A smart young player knows what to do with the puck and how to clear the zone. And Galarno but, snipes. Yeah. Top shelf power play goal. Galarno walks in, beats Tufik Chibob in the top left corner, right over that blocker. Perfect shot in blind hockey. About two and a half feet off the ice inside either post. You're going to score more times than not with that one. I bet the Leafs right now are thinking twice about their unsportsmanlike call because look what it's led to. An unfortunate circumstance like this, and uh, that's why sometimes on the bench you got to really keep quiet and, and bite your lip. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Demos, tell us a little bit about more about what Courage Canada is up to these days. Courage Canada is up to so many things these days. I mean, we uh, we got blind hockey programs going on coast to coast all across Canada, from Halifax all the way to Victoria, and we're doing so much with youth right now helping over 250 to 300 youth right across Canada, boys and girls who are blind and low vision, giving them the equal opportunity to learn to skate and play blind hockey. And uh, I tell you, this tournament has been a big stepping stone for the organization. We received a lot of support from the corporate level as well as in-kind support. And uh, we have a lot of things going on right now, and we're really excited about it. And they're going to have Matt back in here just to do a little bit more of the play-by-play. -play. Oh, and Rick Oriole with the puck. He breaks in, and he scores! Rick Oriole! Rick Oriole! He's on Beating fire tonight. Steve on the inside of the post. Goal for the Leafs. Putting the Leafs ahead by a score of 3-2. to two. They really needed that goal. I tell you, Rick Oriole's come to play today, folks. Six and a half minutes left in the second period of this game. We're basically at the halfway mark. 15-minute penalties, uh, periods, running time. And it is Leafs 3, 2, Canucks. Okay, we're just going over some logistical details, but Steve Galerno has the puck. He gets in over the blue line. He completes the pass. Gary St. Denis with the shot. Good, smart shot block by Scott Roberts, number eight, getting in that shooting lane. Breaking down the ice are the Leafs. Scott Roberts takes it off his skate. What an athletic play. He passes it back across to Graham Roberts. They've now completed the mandatory pass. Scott's now got it in the corner. He's behind the net. Wayne Gretzky's off it. Wrap around, scores! Oh. Wrap around, and he scores. Scott Roberts all day long from the Vancouver Eclipse. That was classic Scott Roberts play, and that may be his first goal of the tournament. Hey, great to see Scott Roberts all the way from Richmond, British Columbia, putting up a point like that in the gold medal game. I tell you, they really need that, Delise. And uh, maybe what maybe Robert's movement and act right now maybe help motivate the team to fire him up a little bit. Yeah, it certainly uh, it certainly seems that way. Uh, the Leafs have now scored two unanswered goals. Another apple for Foxcroft. I'm sure he's going to add that to his point list this weekend. That's for sure. Well, and the Leafs have the puck, and Rick's got it again, and he's got the hot stick. So I think today, if you can, you get the puck to Rick. Number 12, Francois Beauregard. Smart play just sends it on net, and the yellow defender almost knocks it into his own cage. However, it went a little bit wide. And one of our rookies from Ottawa with the puck. 
cycling it around, but it comes out. Yellow on the counter attack. Yellow's doing good. Yellow is pressing. 21, Bruno Hache with the puck. Oh, but the defenseman collects it and sends it out of the zone. And now we have number two, Kevin Rowling's on a bit of a break, but unfortunately he's got nobody with him. Who's he going to pass to? You must complete one pass before you are eligible to score. And so Yellow's going to counterattack again. We've got number 12 streaking down the ice. And the puck goes into the corner. Scott Roberts collects it. Scott Roberts breaking out of his own end. Number eight. Oh, number eight goes offside. That's Tony Fraser, one of our rookies from Ottawa, and that's a bit of a rookie play. But Tony's had an amazing tournament so far. He's put up uh, three points going into this game. I'm not sure if he's added to his point total or not. Had the chance to speak with Tony, too. He's having a lot of fun here this weekend, Matt, and really enjoying himself. I tell you, you know, a lot of these players have come in from all across Canada, and they, they're really just having a great time here at the Madme Athletic Center, Ryerson at the Gardens. Yeah, we have 45 players from all across the country that have come here. Actually, sorry, 44 from across the country and one all the way from Indianapolis. So uh, it's pretty interesting to have some international flair. We certainly wasn't, weren't expecting that, but uh, Kevin Shanley has been a welcome addition, and I know he's hit the score sheet at least twice. I believe, he was, uh, I believe he was a bronze medalist today, so he's not going home empty-handed, uh, bringing a little bit of Courage Canada hardware back to... Uh, Back to the USA. Hopefully it's all good going through customs. <laughs> Speaking of which, the Leafs are actually on the... Oh, what a move by Scott Roberts, the toe drag around Brian Cowie. Scott Roberts has these moves all day long, but sometimes we don't see him in blind hockey tournaments, so it's nice that he's busting them out today. It's really hard to do a, to do a skill move like that with the big puck because it's so easy to defend uh, to just get a piece of it. So you have to be absolutely accurate. Oh, and Galarno's picked up the puck, and it's going to be frozen by Steve. Nope, Steve, is, Steve the goalie is going to pass it to Steve the player. Steve Galarno, 23, racing down the middle of the ice. He's got Brian Cowie with him. He's got Gary St. Denis with him. Brian Cowie's got the puck. He loses it into the corner. It's going to be picked up by Tony. Tony fires it down. Oh, beautiful play. Rick Oriol picks it up, but he's got nobody with him. He needs a pass. He needs a pass. Francois streaking in. Francois did not go to the front of the net. There's the pass, but Steve Galerno is now going to pick up the rebound. 23 flying down the ice. Brian Cowie in the middle. Steve's got to drop it off for Brian. He does not. He's got two defenders on him, but he drops it off for Bruno. The pass has now been completed. Bruno needs a goal here. They're down by two. Bruno passes to somebody in the corner. Steve. Steve with the puck. They're behind the net. The Leafs are defending well, though. Trying to keep them away from the danger areas, and the Leafs are going to get it out. Monsieur Francois Beauregard, the vice president of Lazy Boot Marial, skating across the blue line. Oh, but he just gets absolutely nailed by Brown Cowie, who's going to go to the box for two or less for uh, body checking. Ryan's not happy with the call, but I absolutely agree with that announcer. He really laid into him. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of the players uh, are getting really aggressive right now because it is the gold medal game, and. I tell you, Francois Borgard, that's just going to be another opportunity to motivate him even more taking a hit like that. He's, uh, he's an athlete, he's a competitor, and he doesn't like to lose. So he will definitely be able to, uh, to use that as an ounce of motivation. Yeah, and you know, we, we definitely need to make... Oh, and the period has come to an end. So we're going to go to an intermission. And when we come back from our two-minute intermission, the Leafs are going to start with a uh, two-minute power play. I'm going to vacate the booth for the intermission and leave you in the capable hands of Mark DeMonis. You know, we received a lot of support at this 2013 Courage Canada National Blind Hockey Tournament presented by AMI Accessible Media, Inc. We can't stress to you how much the corporate sponsors have done a role in this, or in this whole tournament. Without them, we would not all be here today and for this whole weekend. You know, groups like uh, AMI Accessible Media, Inc., the CNIB, the Real Wealth Group of Companies, North Toronto Hockey Association, as well as uh, everyone else here today helping out. I also got uh, I also got a lot of support we see from the Ryerson community, in particular Evan Koshner with Skate to Great. Evan's here in the booth with me. Evan, can you just tell me a little bit about Skate to Great and uh, what it's all about? Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, we are basically collecting skates all across Canada at uh, several hundred locations. 
And if you donate your skates, they go to different organizations like Courage Canada and uh, different other places. Sorry, we're operating the booth at the same time. Um, that you can donate your used skates to, and we uh, definitely appreciate every single donation. It's going to a great cause. Perfect. Thanks so much, Evan. That's great. And uh, Skate to Grey was newly founded. They've been receiving a lot of support, and uh, we're going to be hearing a lot more about them in the years to come. Intermission here. I tell you, this game's getting closer and closer, and I don't know exactly what's going to happen for the third. We've had uh, already dogs barking. We've had a coach be ejected from the game. We've had a few players really step up and snipe some goals, like Toronto Ice Owls, Rick Oriole. And uh, I tell you, it's going to be something that uh, is going to be interesting. Got Mark Bentz back in the booth here, and uh, he's enjoying himself. And uh, Mark... What do you think of this period, of this, this game thus far? Well, it's been a pretty good period there, and uh, with the lead, two uh, goals there, I can see it's frustrating yellow a little bit, and uh, that's been a problem with Cowie's penalty, so they're a bit behind two minutes there when they start, but uh, I think they're going to come back. I think it's going to be pretty close. I think Galarno here is uh, is definitely putting going to put matters into his own hands. I wouldn't doubt him and Bruno Hache have a little bit of a meeting right now and discuss maybe some of their strategy from Lazy Boot de Montreal and how they can maybe use that and capitalize here in the next period. Yeah, they're certainly a powerful group, and uh, Matt's back in the booth here, so we'll give her back to Matt for the play-by-play. -play. Thanks to the two Marks taking care of the intermission. Scott Roberts dumps it in, kills a little bit of time off that clock. The Leafs are really, uh, the Leafs are really in the driver's seat here. They uh, they have a two-goal cushion, and they still have a minute and thirty to work on the power play to try to add to that. Come in. Oh, great pass to Scott. Scott blows an edge and slides into the crease and hits the goalie. That's a crease violation, so the faceoff's going to come outside. One of the rules we have in blind hockey for goalie safety is that you must, uh, you must respect the blue ice and stay outside of the paint. Otherwise, we call a, uh, uh, we call a crease violation. We bring the faceoff outside. The goalies tend to be the lowest vision players or no vision at all. They're unable to protect themselves if you're in the crease. So we're going to have a face-off here in the defensive zone for the Canucks, and the Canucks really need to get something going here. I, uh, I don't know about you, Mark, but uh, I think if I was the coach of the Canucks, I'd be thinking about putting Galarno and Hache on the same line right now and seeing if they can get it done. Yeah, I think Coach Sean Cowie's really taking a look at his roster right now and what they're going to do here in this period. Uh, definitely line matching, probably putting your stronger players on a little bit more and uh, probably a little bit of your weaker players, giving a little bit more time on the bench and uh, to enjoy the action. Speaking of which, there's a bit of a bit of a dog pile for the puck there. Rick Oriole, though, of the Leafs with the puck in the zone. He's playing with the Ottawa kids. There's Kevin going into the corner. Kevin Rawlings knocking the puck around. But it comes all the way around, and Karen Russo, one of our two female players, isn't able to keep it in, so she'll skate back down the ice and grab it. And here she comes up to center. She makes a great pass into Kevin. Kevin avoids running into Bruno, but Bruno clears the puck. We've got a skate malfunction with Mr. Foxcroft tripping and falling into the boards, and we're back to five on five. Steve Galerno's got the puck now. Steve Galerno's at the blue line. He's turning around. He passes to Brian Cowley. Brian Cowley's got a chance, but, oh, he can't handle the pass. He goes around behind the net. He centers it in front, but Steve's not there. Nobody's home. Steve's got it now. Tries a shot backhand, misses the net wide. Rolls over into the corner. Gary's got the puck. Gary St. Denis, one of the St. Denis brothers, centers it into the middle. Brian Cowie just smacks at it as he skates by and gets back into the defensive posture. Graham Foxcroft slowly, slowly skating down the middle. Trying to kill off as much time. I guess they figure the two-goal lead is uh, as much as they need, which can be a dangerous thing. The two-goal lead, what is that? The most dangerous lead in hockey. And there's a centering pass, and holy cow, is that a great A? Scoring chance. Coming out of the zone, we now have Galarno. He recovers. It's all yellow all of a sudden. All yellow Canucks. The pass is completed. Gary St. Denis has it. He tries to pass back in the center. And this team's really trying an east-west passing game, Mark. Uh, so what do you think? Do you think in blind hockey an east-west passing game makes the most sense, or would you go with a north-south and try the drop passes? You know, the short pass I've been realizing is the way to go. I think... Uh, Making the quick pass after you gain the neutral zone across the red line is definitely the way you want to be in the offensive zone. But I, but I couldn't be speaking about that right now because my team did finish fourth place, Matt. So so I probably shouldn't be the best person uh, being, uh, you acting as a testament to anything here. And we have yet another crease violation. The referees are going to be very stringent about this. 
And we've called a time out from yellow in the third period. We're really Call happy today, for sure. There's a lot going on. We even have the honor today to have uh, two players from the Canadian Women's National Hockey League program with Hockey Canada, Natalie Spooner and Jennifer Wakefield. They're going to be handing out medals today after the game, and they're just here enjoying the action as well. We're going to get them in the booth shortly. And they're also going to be joined by a representative from our presenting partner, AMI Accessible Media, Inc., Peter Burke, who is the Vice President of uh, Marketing for Accessible Media. We're thrilled to have him here, as well as, I believe, a representative from uh, the Lions Club. District Lions Club. We received a lot of support from the Lions Club. And... Uh, they you know they're great what they do for the blind community and especially for guide dogs and, and even the CNIB. There's always out there having a good cause as well as Courage Canada. And the 30-second timeout is over. The referee is now shaking the puck to allow the players to know where to go. Uh, Tufik is skating back to his net, and he makes it back to his net. So we are good to go. Five-on-five five play, two-goal lead, 11 minutes remaining, 4-2. And the Leafs dump it into the zone. Francois Beauregard grabs it. The pass is good. Bruno Hache working against Francois Beauregard. Bruno Hache throws it up the boards, but number seven chases him down. Number seven is having a whale of a game here today. That's Rick Oriol. Steve Galarno recovers. Francois dumps it deep. And we have Francis Manella picking up the puck in the corner and trying to clear the zone. Another skate malfunction here. The ice has gotten a little chippy after a whole weekend of playing. We've got a two-on-one break. He touched it. So on that play, folks, if you saw that, the defender managed to touch it as the pass went across, and therefore the pass does not count as having been completed. It has to be a clean pass player to player like the one you just saw there. From Galarno to Hache. Hache shoots, and Tufik gets a piece of it. Tufik with the save. Great save from Tufik. What a rookie. Rookie of the year I think this kid is going to be. And we're going to have a face-off in the offensive zone for the Canucks, who are down by two goals with less than 10 minutes left running time. The last two minutes is stop time, but they're really they're going to have to get at least one here. The pass is good. The shot is good. Called a crease violation on Team Yellow. You must stay out of that crease. This is a safety rule. Yellow is going to be their own worst enemy if they keep taking whistles like this with running time. all in the game right and we've had a really great support referees from the greater Toronto Hockey League and you know they've done a heck of a job Matt in terms of just really you know calling the game fair and uh, call it like any other hockey game even though it's a sport for blind people you know what for refs to step in here and all these refs received was an email with our adapted rules and a quick little conversation with myself prior to the game they have done an unbelievable job considering there's three or four things that you really need to remember we have another offside and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of our sponsors for the tournament. We have AMI Accessible Media Inc. as our presenting sponsor and partner for both our organization and the tournament. We have the QP, Toronto Education Workers. Ryerson University is the tournament host. QP is a bench sponsor. North Toronto Hockey is a bench sponsor. The York Toronto Toros Hockey Club is a t-shirt sponsor. And we also received a lot of, uh, lot of support from the uh, Holiday Inn downtown, GTHL Canada, Reebok Hockey provided those very sharp-looking jerseys that the players are all wearing. Uh, Longos has uh, helped out with our food this weekend. Just as a lot well. of support, eh, Matt? Oh, a lot of support, and also the local 113 transit workers, as well as about a dozen other groups and individuals who, uh, who really contributed, as well as our 35 people who took part in our Sponsor a Player Challenge. We were looking for 45 groups to donate $300, to help us cover the base cost of the tournament. We worked it out that that's basically what it costs per player. And we had 35 groups uh, participate, which was great. Bit of a collision there. No penalty called. Yellow survive, or Blue survives, but yellow was really threatening there. Puck goes up the middle. Here it comes from Rick Oriol. Rick Oriol is having a great game. By far his best game of the tournament, wouldn't you say, Mark? Quite the afternoon for Rick Oriol from the Toronto Ice Owls. He came today, and he came to play, and he came because he wants gold. And you know what? Rick is a, another player that, you know, he played uh, 
He played a lot of sighted hockey, um, but he hasn't participated in one of our blind hockey tournaments before, so it certainly takes a few games to kind of get your feet wet and figure out what's going on out there. It's quite a number of players in the same position, eh, Matt? It's great to see new faces, new players playing. It's what this game's all about. I think 10 out of 45 of the players at last count were playing in their first ever blind hockey tournament this weekend. Uh or first ever blind hockey game this weekend, rather. And this is the first ever true blind hockey tournament. We've organized series before, we've organized exhibitions, but we've never had a four-team national tournament like this. And we got the gold medal on the line with only seven minutes left. Seven minutes to go. That's not a lot of time, especially when uh, with running time here until the last two minutes of stop time. And uh, we need to get some, going something fast. And you could tell Steve Galerno wants it. I think I've said his name more than anybody today. He's been all over that puck. But Blue is matching. They're line matching. They got Scott Roberts out there, and he's done a dandy of a job. Scott coming over the line into the corner, looking for a player to pass to. Player's covered. Graham's covered in front. Steve has sprawled out the goalie and taken out his own man. And there we are in the corner. Oh, and Scott tries to pass to the point. Too hot to handle. It comes all the way down the ice. I believe that's... Uh, oh. That is one of the Ebu defensemen, number five, another one of our rookies here. Uh, number five on the Leafs is Pascal saint -Sain. He's uh, He's a great addition to the Ebu. Look forward to having him for many, many more years. Bruno Hache with a great opportunity. Takes a shot blocked in front. And they blow a whistle. Tupic Chibob with the save. Tupic's having a great game. Yellow really needs to get better wood on the puck. You know, it's funny. The yellow team... The Canucks have come to the point right now where they probably should be considering what's going to be happening for their next time out, uh, probably with two minutes left on the clock because they got to really figure out a solid game plan. Coach Sean Cowie, I know right now, is probably taking a look at the roster and seeing which players are going to be key parts of uh, the next few minutes here. You know what? I uh, I think it was actually Yellow that took the timeout, so uh, they're not going to have one left, and Blue's certainly not going to take a timeout uh, because they're uh, they're leading right now. And it's interesting we have to see an that. incorrect draw. Jump the gun, number 14, Gary St. Denis, taking the draw and getting thrown out before the whistle went. You'll notice that the puck starts on the ice. The players are allowed to touch it at the referee's whistle. This makes it a competition of uh, reflexes rather than who's got the most vision and can see it. Randy Nelson of the Toronto Ice House with a big block to keep it in. But the Blue Leafs recover. They're coming down the ice. Attempted pass across from Rick Oriel to Francois Beauregard gets intercepted. Coming out of the zone, oh, number 17, Wayne St. Denis with the puck. He dumps it on the ice, and then he uh, trips. We've got Brian Cowie chasing it down. Brian cycling back for it. Brian and Wayne seem to have their signals crossed here. And then Wayne with a dump in. It's going to go all the way down the ice. Number 14, yellow, Gary St. Denis playing with his brother going in. I believe that probably counted as the pass. Tries the centering pass, and he misses Brian Cowie. Was that ever a glorious chance? Have they been able to connect on that? Number 18, Randy Nelson defending the blue line. Passes it up to Brian. Brian makes the pass, but then he skates offside. So Gary has to wait. Gary waits. Brian comes. Brian with the puck. Takes a slapper, but it goes into the corner. Kevin Rowlings regrouping, grabbing the puck. This Leafs team has not been beat all weekend, and it looks like they're going to make it 4-0, and even though that their coach was ejected earlier in the game. The score is 4-2 to two with 3 minutes and 50 seconds left. Two-goal cushion. Yellow really needs to pop one here if they're going to have a chance to pull their goalie and try to win that gold medal. That insurance goal by the Leafs was definitely really important, securing a little bit of leeway here before uh, with the last few minutes just clocking down. A little bit of a pick play there. Scott Roberts got knocked over. He's not too happy about that, but he gets right back up. Graham's on the attack once again. He's all alone. He's got nobody. And Megan McHugh with the block. The diving shot block keeps the puck away from the net. Megan's been one of our uh, regular players in our Courage Canada hockey events and is a regular participant in the Toronto Ice Owls uh, weekly games. Bruno with the puck. Bruno Ashe drops it for Galerno. Galerno misses it. And it goes to Scott Roberts, who then makes the pass. But Steve Galarno with the back check. He really wants this medal. He's playing both ends of the ice. Big two-handed smack at the puck. Good pass. Good pass. Scott's got the puck. He's in deep. Scott Roberts behind the net. Passes out to Kevin. Megan McHugh with the block again. Megan really uh, really earning her, uh, earning her stripes on this shift in particular. But she's lost her stick. However, Yellow is breaking down the ice the other way. 
Blue recovers the puck, however. We got Mike Davies from Peterborough. Oh, and Mike with a turnover. This could be costly. They're wide open. They got to shoot. He's got to shoot. That was almost oh, a great and there was a bit of a there. quick whistle there. Bruno's complaining, but I think Tufik, uh, Tufik made the initial stop, and the referee deemed that the puck had stopped in the crease. And as we mentioned earlier in our broadcast, when the goalie makes the save, as long as it remains in the crease, the goalie does not have to cover it if the puck stops. Uh, it will be blown dead and frozen immediately. So I'm trying to figure out right now, Matt, uh, heading down here after the game, we're going to do the medal ceremonies. What exactly do I do? And guys like Mark Bentz, we don't get a medal. Do we just kind of hang out and watch everyone else? Mark, maybe we'll hang out together, Bentz? Well, you guys will be going down to the, you guys will be going down to the bench in your jerseys for the official team photo. But, uh, but yes, you did not uh, win a medal this weekend. Yeah, unfortunately, it's a participation award there for you and me, Mark. But uh, it was a hell of a game, and uh, I'll hang that certificate proudly. Mark Bentz. I, I also hear British Columbia. I also hear the guys on the uh, the fourth place Habs team are buying dinner for the rest of us. So, uh, so it could be a good night. We might run up that bill a little bit on them. And there's Bruno winning the draw to Steve Galarno. Galarno back to the point. Big slap shot from the point. Number 20, Norman Blais, Storm and Norman, but he throws it into the corner. 21 behind the net, Bruno cycling around. He's got two defenders on him. They are shadowing him. He just cannot get them off him. Oh, oh yeah, they're playing tight the right puck. now. galarno has got it. Oh, his own man checked him. That happens in blind hockey sometimes, low vision player. And Galarno, oh, and he shoots too high and misses the net. Tupic was in great position. It's really tough to get a good shot through with defenders crowding in front of the net. There is a minute 21 left in the game. They're really in trouble now. they got to press. they got to get a goal. If, uh, if I was the coach, and uh, I would definitely have Galarno out there as much as possible because he has really brought the heat today. He's been playing a 200-foot game. The goalie is still in the net. I don't believe they're going to consider pulling him, but I don't know. Talked to Coach Sean Kelly about that yesterday. He says he's not a big fan of pulling the goalie from the net because he thinks it's really important to have him in, in case of a quick recover and turnover. And we're in the last minute of play in the third period. This game is actually out of reach. It is going to be the Toronto, or the Leafs are going to be the champions. The first ever 2013 Courage Canada National Blind Hockey Tournament presented by AMI. I tell you, it's been it's been a number of years since 1967. The Leafs have actually come out on top in this venue, and uh, it'll be great to see the Leafs here. Uh, really, sell, have a great celebration and enjoy the festivities. Got a whistle here. We got a whistle. The goalie has made a save. Some of the yellow players are celebrating. They think they've scored, but I don't believe so. I believe the goalie had it underneath him. It didn't get through. I think the score is still 4-2. 23 seconds left. There is a timeout from the Leafs, um, which is an interesting coaching decision. I guess with 23 seconds left, you don't want to take any chances. I think a lot of players are really tired too, and I think that they're just looking to get a little bit of a breather right now before they uh, settle in the last 23 seconds. If any team could possibly, uh, if any team could possibly come back, it would definitely be the yellow. We saw that in our opening game of the tournament that you were a part of, Mark. We uh, we had yellow score uh, two. We had three goals in a crazy game that ended in a 5-5 tie. Three goals in the last minute and a half of play, and in fact, yellow scored with seven seconds left to tie the game back up. So, offensive zone faceoff for the Canucks. 23 seconds left. Two goal deficit. They could they could conceivably do it, but I don't think so. I think this one's going to be out of reach. No, man, I got to have a little bit of faith. There's been goals here, been passed in the four. We haven't seen any in that quick amount of time, though. But hey, you never know. History could be in the making. History could indeed be in the making, and then we will be going for the live for the medal ceremony. They blew the whistle. Galarno with the puck. Galarno gets knocked over. Blue has got the puck. Blue's trying to clear the zone. Brian Cowie from the Eclipse on it. He cycles it down deep. Time's going. Last 10 seconds of play. This one, this one is definitely in the books. The Leafs are going to be the champions. We have a penalty being called with three seconds left, but it's not going to matter, folks. This one is done. The Leafs are tournament champions, and the Canucks are our silver medalists. Well, the uh, Sens are our bronze medalists, and our Habs are our fourth-place finishers. Tell you, three seconds left, and the Leafs come out on top here at the 2013 Courage Canada National Blind Hockey Tournament. Matt, great weekend, great festivities. 
And I tell you, this is going to be a memorable experience for a lot of these athletes, and uh, we're really looking forward to the medal ceremonies here. Unbelievable tournament. I am going to head down for the medal ceremony. Thank you very much for joining me, Mark Demonis. Uh, thanks for those of you that tuned in to check it out, all our sponsors and everybody in attendance. This has been an unbelievable hockey tournament, uh, and we are going to... Uh, this has been an unbelievable hockey tournament, and we're going to be keeping going. So uh, come support the tournament next year. Get excited. This is a great weekend for everybody. I'm signing off. I'm Matt Morrow. That's it. And it's over. The Leafs have come out on top. The 2013 champions, the Leafs. And that's it from the booth. I'm going down ice level for the medal ceremony, and Mark has to go down for the team pitcher. Okay. Hey.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the medal ceremony for the 2013 Courage Canada National Blind Hockey Tournament. Bienvenue à la ceremony and the bees will be done for the 2013 Courage Canada Hockey Center. A big thank you first and foremost to all our volunteers. This weekend would not be possible without you. A big round of applause, please. And we have now two events on our single group. The players played the first ever four team round robin blind hockey tournament. This is going to be a piece of history one day when this sport evolves to the point where it's in the Paralympic Games. Is the key to some we see? Aujourd'hui, on participe dans le premier tournoi de hockey sur la table de quatre équipes. Et cette tournoi-ci, c'est l'histoire so, beginning with the fourth place finishers, please put your hands together for Team A, the house. Mark Betts of the Vancouver Cubs, Joseph Delgado of the Vancouver Mark Montes of the Toronto Red Sox, and David Cook is the Cook of Montreal. Tommy Tebert, Ibu de Marriott, Jesse Bado, Ibu de Marriott, David Burnett, Toronto Ice Owls, Richard Holloway, Toronto Ice Owls, Dominique Nahu, Ibu de Marriott, and Gold, Joey Cabral, Toronto Ice Owls, and the volunteer coaching staff of Mario Bamba, is Ibu de Marriott, Jeff Vassilva, Toronto, and Nathan Mackey, the Vancouver Eclipse. To present the bronze medals, I would like to welcome Mr. Ray Charbonneau to the ice. He's the regional chairperson of the District A711 Lions Club. For the Amis de Medaille, bronze, Mr. Ray Charbonneau to Lions Club. The bronze medal team is Team C the Sens. Roman Hart of the Toronto Exiles, Wyatt Murray of the Toronto Exiles, Marc Antoine Bailly is Ibu de Marriott, Gilles Poulet is Ibu de Marriott, Francois Michel is Ibu de Marriott, Kevin Shandy, Indianapolis, Douglas Dow. Toronto, Ontario, Brian McLean, Toronto Ice House, Toronto Ice House, and the Canada Vice President Eric Steves of Vancouver Eclipse, the volunteer coaching staff of Raphael Lamba in Montreal, Pat Sherry of the Vancouver Eclipse. For the silver medals, for the medaille d'argent, I would like to welcome Mr. Peter Burke, the Vice President of Marketing and Communications of our partners, ALI Accessible Media Inc. For the remise de medaille d'argent, je invite Monsieur Peter Burke to ALI.
the silver medalists are Team B, Canucks, the yellow, the gagnant with the medaille d'argent, c'est the Canucks en jaune. Team is Brian Howie, Vancouver Eclipse. Steve Galando, Ibu de Maria. Bruno Hodgson, Ibu de Maria. Gary St. Denis, Windsor, Ontario. Wayne St. Denis, Toronto Ice Owls. Brian Henry, Chatham, Ontario. Tom Walden, Ibu de Maria. Mike Davies, Peterborough, Ontario. Megan McHugh, Toronto Ice Owls. Randy Nelson, Toronto Ice Owls. Mike Stevens, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. And in that, Steve Vanderbilt of the Vancouver Eclipse, with the volunteer coaches staff of Ed Angers, Dizzy Boutmariel, and Sean Cowell of the Vancouver Eclipse. Put your hands together.
Okay, the tournament photo. I need my tournament staff in the middle here. I need the coaches and the players lined up as you are. And uh, Ryan and Hughes will be at center. He's taking the official photos of everybody else on the ice. Needs to back up and get out of Ryan's shot, please. Mel.